Welcome to WMUL-FM Training. I'm Mike Stanley. Today we're going to talk about Rivendell versions 3.6 and version 4 and answer the question, what's the diff? We're going to talk about all the changes that have been made between these versions. WMUL is planning to start using version 4 beginning with the fall semester. To help keep the confusion down, I'll put a big 3 right up here in the corner whenever we're looking at a Rivendell 3 screen and a big 4 whenever we're looking at a Rivendell 4 screen. The most immediate visible change is to the RD AirPlay window. It's no longer fixed to 1024 by 768 It can now be maximized. The larger window allows for more entries to be visible here in the button log. For the main log window to be wider and show more metadata fields at once, and for the sound panel to have more buttons. The button log now shows between 6 and 10 songs in addition to the one that is currently playing, depending on the height of the window. The sound panel now shows between 9 and 13 columns of buttons, depending on the width of the window, and between 6 and 8 rows, depending on the height. That gives me between 54 and 104 total buttons major increase over the previous limit of 25 buttons. As you can see, if you shrink the window, any extra buttons disappear off the edge until you expand the window again. The top bar has been rearranged. All the same widgets are here, just in a different order. Although the functionality of the wall clock and the audio meters have changed. Here we have the wall clock. Now, back here in version 3, I could click this button and change it between 24 hour time and 12 hour AM PM time. In version 4, that is now a global setting set by the system administrator, me, and WMULFM has standardized on 12 hour AM PM time. Just below that is the mode indicator button that allows me to switch between automatic, manual, and live assist modes. Just below that, in red, is the post point counter that tells me when the next legal ID is going to hit, and tells me whether the hour is over or under scheduled on music. In this case, I have an additional 6 minutes 32 seconds of music scheduled that is needed to reach the 12 o'clock legal ID. Just a quick note from the editing desk. The blurriness you see right now is purely a result of the video codec used to record the video. The codec really does not like that combination of black text on a red background. In person, the text on the post point counter is completely clear. Over here are the audio meters. This widget has been completely reworked. Back here in version 3, there was one global meter for both the main log slash button log and the sound panel. Now, in version 4, it shows three separate meters. Air P or Air Play is the main log slash button log. So it only meters the songs that are playing through the main log through the Rivdell channel on the board. PVW is preview. So anytime I preview something under the add button, or over an RD library, this meter shows those levels. It works even if I preview something in RD Log Get It. PANL panel is the meter for the sound panel that plays through the panel channel on the board. I only have four letters to work with, so I got to abbreviate it a little bit. And the button shows what meter and channel is being used Air P or PANL. This is the Pi Witch that shows me where I am in the song. This function has not changed. This is the next stop counter that tells me where the next stop is in the log. I'm playing a music log, so the next stop is at 1.32.50 a.m., some 13 hours, 39 minutes from now. This widget is also unchanged. Up here is the label area. It's much larger than before, but it's otherwise unchanged. And over here is our station logo. The final major change to RD Airplay is that the voice tracker module has been added. It shares the right-hand side of the screen with the sound panel and the main log. 
it works identically to the voice tracker that is already in RD Log Edit. The final minor change to RD AirPlay is that the main log now only displays a single column of start time. Back here in version 3, it had columns for both the estimated start time and the scheduled start time. In version 4, there is just a single column called start time. That is actually the same time displayed on the start buttons on the button log. For any timed event, such as the legal ID, it will display the scheduled time. For the other events, it will display the estimated time based on the scheduled time of the legal ID and the runtime of each song. The thing about that is, is when I'm board opping a newscast or sportscast, when the system is stopped and in manual, only the scheduled time of the legal IDs is shown. That makes it a little less convenient to jump the log to the correct point in the hour after the game. I can't estimate. If it's say 12.30, I could pick a song that is about in the middle of the 12 o'clock hour. But it's actually good enough to just be in the correct hour. Even if it were 12.55, I would be fine selecting the first song of the 12 o'clock hour. The timed event for the 1 o'clock legal ID would resync the log. The next thing that has changed is within RD Library. The edit marker window has been completely reworked. There's no way to summarize it, so we'll just have to go through the whole thing. Here's the waveform. The markers are shown by these color-coded bars with arrows. These are the amplitude zoom buttons. They just zoom the amplitude view in and out. They do not actually change the amplitude of the song. These zoom the timeline in and out. I can zoom full in, full out, or in steps. These are the go to and transport buttons. The go to buttons jump the view to the start, or to the end, or to the play cursor. The first play button plays from the green play cursor. The other two play buttons depend on which marker set is selected. There's two ways to select a marker set. I can click one of the markers in the waveform, or I can click one of the marker buttons down below the waveform. The arrows of the currently selected marker set will be larger than the others. Now the second play button, which has a bar before the play icon, that one starts playing from the start marker of whichever marker set I have selected. When I select the talk marker set, it plays from the talk start marker. When I select the segue marker set, it plays from the segue start marker. Now we're going to zoom in on the talk marker here for a second. The third play button, which has the bar after the play icon, that one plays the two seconds leading up to the end marker. The loop button toggles whether to loop playback. Circling back around to these buttons, the boxes show which markers are set and which are not. The markers that are not set will be grayed out. And for each marker that is set, it shows the time of the start marker, the end marker, and the length in between. If I want to move a marker, I just click and drag it in the waveform. If I want to add a marker set, I go to the waveform and right click. This menu pops up and I can select which marker to add. The talk and segue markers are already set, so those options are grayed out. If I want to delete a marker set, I right click on either the start or end marker and click delete marker. That will delete both the start and end markers of the set. To re-add it, I right click and select add markers. It just drops them right under my mouse cursor. Then I click and drag the markers to where I want them. This is the VU meter. Down here are some additional controls. I can use the threshold, trim start and trim end controls to automatically adjust the cart start and end markers but it's probably easier and more accurate to set it manually if you needed to. 
The cut gain control is the one that actually will adjust the levels of the cut. I won't usually need this because cuts will have proper levels before they are ingested. The next thing I'm going to talk about is how RD AirPlay and RD Log Edit display timed events. Back here in version 3, timed events were displayed like this. In the button log, the scheduled start time would be in dark blue and bold. And over in the main log, everything but the group name would also be in dark blue and bold. And the estimated start time and scheduled start time would both be prefixed with a T. It used a T for all timed events, whether it was a make next, a start immediately, or a wait up to. In RD Log Edit, the only indication is that the estimated or scheduled start time will be prefixed with a T. In version 4, much of that has changed. In the button log, the scheduled start time is in bold and prefixed with an S or an H. The S means that it is a make next or soft timed event. That's where the S comes from. H means it's either a start immediately or a wait up to event. Those are hard timed events, thus the H. Over in the main log, this hasn't changed much. It still does everything except the group in dark blue and bold, but now it uses the same S or H prefix on the start time. In RD Log Edit, the time is in dark blue and has the same S or H prefix. Next, I'm going to talk about a minor change in RD Library and the way it previews audio. Back in version 3, if I select a song, start previewing it, and then select another song, then the system immediately switches to previewing the second song. In version 4, that no longer happens. If I start previewing one song, and then select another, the original keeps playing. Now, I have to click the play button if I want to change which song I'm previewing. Next, I'll talk about how start and end dates are displayed in RD Library. Back in version 3, when I had a cart with multiple cuts, and I clicked the little plus icon to show all the cuts on the main window, it displayed the start and end dates of the individual cuts. In version 4, that is no longer the case. Only the start and end dates of the cart as a whole is displayed. The start and end dates of the individual cuts are still displayed in the cut list. Also in version 4, the color codes have made a lot of items yellow. It seems to show that start and end dates have been set, but that the cart is playable. I have not been able to figure out the color codes on this screen. The next change is a minor one and has to do with how RD Library displays carts that have only one cut. Back in version 3, it would only display this little plus icon for carts that had multiple cuts. In version 4, every cart displays the plus icon, even if it only has one cut. Next, version 4 makes it a little easier to change the transition type of a log entry in RD Log Edit. In version 3, the only way to change the transition type was to open the Edit Log Entry dialog box and change it here in this little transition type box. And that still works in version 4. But now I have another option. I can right click on the entry in the log and select my transition type here. The next change is another minor one and has to do with how RD Log Edit displays valid two dates for logs. Back in version 3, if a log had no end date, the valid two column would display TFN for until further notice. In version 4, it now says always, which matches the valid from column for start dates. Next, I'll talk about RD Panel. As with RD AirPlay, the RD panel window can now be maximized, allowing for many more buttons per panel. It can now display between 9 and 18 columns, and between 7 and 11 rows, depending on the size of the window. 
That gives me between 63 and 198 buttons. The final thing I'll talk about is the Linux distro. Version 4 of Rivendell runs atop a different Linux distro called Linux Mint. This change is due to deep under the hood technical reasons that are well beyond the scope of our manuals or this video. What affects me are a few minor cosmetic changes. One, the roll up slash roll down button is now a dot instead of an upward or downward pointing arrow. Two, the taskbar is now at the bottom of the screen. Three, the workspaces icon is toward the left hand end of the taskbar instead of toward the right hand end. Four, I now have this nifty show desktop button that minimizes all the open windows. Actually, across both workspaces, not just the one I have selected. And fifth, the applications menu is now this LM inside of a circle icon. And that's all the changes I've been able to find so far. I'm still exploring. Keep an eye on the latest draft of our operations manual for any updates. If I find enough additional items, or if I find something really big, I'll make a follow-up video. This video is released under a Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike license. Thanks for watching.